Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. My name is Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is active transport. So let's learn together. All right, today we're going to talk about active transport. Now we've already talked about passive transport, so I do want to take just a moment and kind of recap passive transport. So to do that, let's take a hypothetical situation here. So what happens when plant cells are placed in solutions of different tonicity? And what this means is, what happens if we put a plant cell in either pure water or in salt water, is what we're looking at here. If we put a plant cell in a hypertonic solution, that would be something like salt water, or it would just be the fact that maybe you don't water your plants for a long time. Um, I am a bad plant mom. I don't take care of plants very well. Um, so this happens to my plants a lot. And what happens when they're placed in a hypertonic solution, either they don't get enough water or they have too much salt or sugar, they become plasmalized. And what this means is all the water is trying to balance out and create homeostasis, so the water leaves the cell. Um, and that's why the cell shrinks or shrivels. And if you have nice pretty flowers and you forget to water them or they don't have enough pure water, they're gonna wilt. So that's what happens to plants. They don't necessarily just shrink, but they wilt. Now, if you add water back to them and put them in nice pure water or a hypotonic solution, that flower isn't gonna stay wilted necessarily. Instead, um, it can become turgid and that water will move back into the plant cell. Eventually the plant cell could burst, but usually it will only absorb as much water as it needs to into the vacuole. So that's where that water gets stored inside the plant cell. It moves into the vacuole and makes the plant stand up tall. Um, and I'm sure you could do this in your house or apartment. Just don't water your plant for a day and then water it and see what happens. It's going to spring back. Um, but also maybe don't follow my advice because I am not good at taking care of plants. <laughs> now we have a second scenario here. What happens when aquatic plant leaves are placed in a salt solution? So if we take an aquatic plant leaf and we put it in just salts with barely any water, what should we expect to happen? Are these cells going to shrink or are they going to swell? Let's think, put it in salt. If you have too much salt, you usually get dehydrated. So you would expect them to shrink up, which we see here. You can see that cell used to be all around the edges. We have a cell wall that's still there, but that cell membrane has shrunken um, and taken the cell really, really small. And the reason why is because water has left that cell. The vacuole was really big and now there's barely any water in the vacuole. So it's really small. And that's why the cell will shrivel um, or shrink when you put it in a salt or hypertonic solution. Now let's talk about active transport. So the first example of active transport we're going to talk about today are protein pumps. And we talked about this when we discussed the cell membrane structure. Protein pumps are found throughout the cell membrane. And they, these ones in particular for active transport will be moving from low concentration to high concentration. It's the opposite of passive and the pumps require ATP energy. Now remember, we had protein channels that were used in, um, or protein helpers facilitated diffusion used in passive transport. This is completely different. Protein pumps are active transport. You can think of it because a pump is something that requires energy to use. And what it does is basically takes um, from where we've got a low amount of a substance, pumps it through the cell membrane using energy to an area where we already have a high amount of a substance. Many times it's going to exchange one substance for another. And a well-known example is the sodium potassium pump, which is going to exchange sodium ions for potassium ions, and they'll trade places through the pump. Again, it still requires energy because it is active transport. So energy is definitely required here. To compare it to the, our types of passive transport, we have diffusion, which is high to low concentration, no ATP, and facilitated diffusion, again, high to low concentration, no ATP. Active transport, and this would be our sodium potassium pump here, requires ATP and is exchanging molecules from where they are low concentration 
and moving them to where they are highly concentrated. So active transport, it's like going up a hill. You go from the low side of something to the high side of something. So you require energy to go up that hill. It's how I think about it in my head. So again, passive is high to low. Active transport is low to high. So endocytosis is another example of active transport. It's where the cell membrane envelopes molecules or envelops molecules within a vesicle and brings them into the cell. When I think about this, it's kind of like the cell membrane reaching out for something it wants, putting its arms around it, its cell membrane arms, and then dragging it into the cell. It's going to just engulf them and bring it into the cell. And that's what endo means. Endo means within. So it's bringing something within, cyto, a cell. So endocytosis is within the cell. This requires ATP, it is active transport. Two types of endocytosis include phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is cell eating, where the cell takes in large particles, and pinocytosis would be cell drinking, where the cell takes in different liquids like water. Even though water typically goes across the cell membrane without needing this, other larger molecule liquids would require pinocytosis. This is just showing a quick diagram of phagocytosis on this side here and pinocytosis on this side over here. Um, it's the same process. They're getting kind of engulfed in cell membrane and then it pinches off to form a vesicle and moves to where it's required in the cell. And that little pocket there, once it's pinched off, is called a vesicle in this case and this case. The last type of active transport we're going to talk about today, again, ATP is required, is exocytosis. It's the opposite of endocytosis. And in exocytosis, waste and cellular products get released from the cell. This is really, really important. If these waste products aren't removed from the cell, our cell can build up and these toxins can cause our cell to not function or to, to be destroyed. So exocytosis helps us keep that homeostasis in our cell so that it can function the way it needs to. Again, this is active transport and it requires ATP. And it's, it looks just like the opposite picture of endocytosis. There's a vesicle that meets the cell membrane. You see that here. And once it meets the cell membrane, it fuses with it or joins with it and releases all the products inside the vesicle. So now they're outside of the cell. Pretty simple stuff on that one. So that's all there really is to our active transport. The keys here are that ATP is required. You need ATP energy for active transport and it's going from low concentration to high concentration. So let's recap what we've learned today. Active transport is the process of bringing molecules from where they are have a low concentration to an area where they have a much higher concentration also known as going against the concentration gradient. I like to think of this as kind of trying to push something up a hill. Um, you're going against the normal grain of things. So to do that, you're going to need energy. And not just any energy, you need ATP energy in our cells to do this. There are three types of active transport that we talked about today. The first is a protein pump. Um, a good example would be a sodium potassium pump that would help your muscles um, fire. The second type of active transport we talked about today is endocytosis, where the cell membrane actually brings in materials by enfolding them in the cell membrane. Endo kind of means into, so that's a good way to remember it. The third type is exocytosis, and it's kind of what it sounds like. Exo sounds like exit, and it's when your cell removes things like waste or other byproducts um, from its cell membrane. That's it for today. Please like and subscribe for more biology videos. Um, I also enjoy comments, so please feel free to comment on any video. Um, and as always, I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you later.